part of the reason why I put this very question in, okay, is so that you can see a couple of things. Firstly, okay. One more. Hold on. Okay, now, um, you can choose whichever axis, axis you want. If you did it um, around this way, for instance, okay, we'll do it by slices first. So you take a slice out, like that, perpendicular to your axis of rotation. And then if I take that part out, it'll look something like this. Okay, so you work that out. So you add up a bunch of these, well, since it has no, no inner radius, um, you add up a bunch of circles, no problem. Okay, here, you do a slice or an area across that way, right? I'm still rotating the same direction, okay? So when this comes out, it's gonna look like this, right? Oops. And there's my cylindrical shell. Okay, and of course you can unfold that, you get a rectangle, no problems, okay? Now the really cool thing is, you can add up a bunch of circles, you can add up a bunch of cylinders which turn into rectangles, you can add up anything, so long as, <clears throat> They're paper thin, whether it's delta x or delta y, right? And so long as all of them look the same, right? Like if I took this slice over here, it would still look the same, just smaller, right? And if I took this slice over here, it would be the same, just, oh, well, you know, you, you see what's going on. Okay? Now, therefore, here's the real clincher, right? And uh, it, it makes sense of a relationship which I hope you've been looking at and puzzling over for a long time. You can take circles, you can take shells, but you could also treat this kind of like, well, treat it like an onion, right? Now an onion, right, it's got layers that don't go across like this or up and down like this. Each layer is itself, well, it's not a, it's not a cylindrical shell. It's a spherical shell, right, a spherical shell. So I could say, look, I want to take the limit as delta, now, hold on a second, hold on a second. Here you've got delta x, so it's horizontal. Here you've got delta y. What is the width of one of these cylindrical shells in terms of, it's not x, radius. and it's not y. It's in terms of radius, right? If I, if I draw these all out, right, there's a delta r, okay, coming from the center, coming out to the edge, right? So if I think about this, okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add up a whole bunch, right? Uh, it's going to be, well, x equals from the center of it, um, out to the edge, which is the radius. Okay. Now, you know what the area of an annular disk is. You know what the area of a cylindrical shell is. What is the area of a spherical shell? And the answer is, it's, um, it's surface area, isn't it? It's surface area. Right? And of course, that's the, that's the area, and then you multiply it by the thickness. Okay, turn this guy into an integral. Um, that 4 pi, you can just chuck them out the front, right? From naught to r. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> r squared dr. Oh, oh, right, okay. There you go. No constant. Now, admittedly, I said, do it by slices, do it by cylindrical shells. I did not say do it by spherical shells, right? Partly because that's not really in the course. Uh, but, but have you wondered about this? And when you first learned differentiation, did anyone get suspicious that the derivative, right, of the volume equation equals the surface area equation? What's with that? Did anyone, <laughs> did anyone ever notice that the derivative of the area of a circle is the circumference? Why is that? Because, because, if you want to work out the area of a circle, you just take a bunch of circumferences. There you go. Okay. You add them all up and you end up with your area, okay?